What's up everyone? This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we are going to start working on our fade without jQuery. We're only using JavaScript here and I promise you it is not going to be painful. And it's actually going to be kind of fun. So a little disclaimer first, as you can see I am working with Eclipse because I love Eclipse and I'm a Java guy. So I actually work with .jsp extensions. But it doesn't matter if you're working with PHP, HTML, uh, Python, no, ma no matter where you are, it does not matter because all we are going to be working on in this tutorial is HTML and JavaScript. So as long as you can have another JS file and you embed that JavaScript file into your HTML or, J or JSP or whatever, it does not matter. So don't worry about it. And if you're not in Eclipse, it also doesn't matter. So all I have so far is I just have um, a standard template for my HTML page. So this is fade.jsp and I have a fade.js file which is in the same directory as my fade.jsp and I have an image here which is the image that I'm going to want to fade in and I'm going to want to fade out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button for my fade in and my fade out. So in order to do that just say button and then in here let's say fade out and then make another button and call that one fade in. So if I save this and I preview it, now you will see we have a button called Fade Out and a button called Fade In. And of course, they do not do anything yet because we haven't gotten there yet. So now that we've created those two buttons, let's create the div that we're going to have that is actually going to be fading in and fading out. So I'm going to put a space in here. And then under this, I'm going to have a div. And inside my div, I'm going to have an image with a source and then close that image. And it's just going to be image.png. So you can have some text inside of this div, you can have you can have whatever you want, but just encapsulate the div, just encapsulate whatever you want with divs and then inside of it put whatever you want. So if I go here again and I refresh this, now we have our little kid chasing the kitty. And as you can see, the buttons still don't do anything. Wow, what a surprise. But now we have our image, which is encompassed by this div. So the reason we gave it a div to go around everything is because we want to give this div an ID. So let's just say an ID of, uh, let's just say message. Keep it real simple. So the reason we said this is because when we make our fade in and fade out effect, we will target this div so that whatever is in the div will be faded in and faded out. The reason you want to do that is what if you had like a big text box with all these different things inside of it, you know, uh, images and all this stuff, and you wanted to make the entire thing fade in and fade out? Well, a really easy way to do that is just encompass a whole div around everything and then just say fade that one thing in and fade that one thing out so that all the child elements inside like this guy right here they would all fade in and they would all fade out so I hope you guys are kind of with me so all we did was we made two buttons and then we made our div that we are going to fade in and we are going to fade out now the way that we do this is going to be with JavaScript so we are going to have to embed that JavaScript file into our JSP page our PHP or whatever you're working with so in order to do that just say script and then say type and then give it an attribute of text forward slash JavaScript and then you put the actual URL of that JavaScript page. So in order to do that you just say src is assigned and then you say fade.js or whatever your JavaScript file is called. So if I come in here and let's do a little error checking here I'm gonna just say hello world and then let's close that comment. So if we come over here and we refresh this page and we say view page source and we click this fade.js link we see hello world so now we know that we have correctly embedded our JavaScript file into our page very important and I love to do error checks like that just to make sure because imagine if we wrote all this JavaScript and then nothing was working and we were like why isn't it working and then we notice oh we we're missing the E in fade.js so Little things like that can help you along the way. All right, anyway, so now we have made everything that we want to for our um, for our JSP page. So the last thing that we are going to add is an on-click event for each one of these fade-ins and fade-outs. I'm going to just move this to the next line. Then I'm going to say on-click. So in this on-click, we are going to put the JavaScript function of what we want to happen when the user 
clicks that button. So that's why we made a button and we say on click. You could do the same thing with a link and have ahref and put that JavaScript function in there, but we're just going to use buttons for this example. So here we will put the function of what we want to happen. So since this is a fade out, we will have a fade out function in our JavaScript. And the things that we are going to pass to that function is the div that we want to fade out and the amount of seconds we want it to take. So the div that we want to fade out is message. So I'm going to copy message and I'm going to put it in here. So you will target whatever you want to fade out by its ID. And you want it to fade out in let's say uh, four seconds. So now for the on click of fade in, we will call a different function called fade in. And we also want to pass that div ID and we wanted to fade in in four seconds. Same similar thing. So now you will see whenever you want to do a fade out and a fade in on your page, you would just add an on click event and you would figure out what you want to fade in or fade out. And you would click, you would act, like say fade in or fade out, depending on if you wanted to do either one. And then you would pass that div ID. All right, so now we are done with fade.jsp. There's nothing else we need to do here. Now we are going to jump into fade.js. So the first things that we want to do is we want to actually make the functions that are called fade out and fade in. And we want to make sure they have parameters of an ID and an amount of seconds. So let's make fade out first. So function fade out. And we said that we want to have passed an ID, a div ID, and an amount of seconds. So highlight this, and let's do the same for fade in. And all you need to do is change this to fade in. All right. And the last function I want you guys to use, to um, to uh, make is one called function set opacity. And we are going to say we are going to pass an ID here, and we are going to pass a level. Now, let me explain what this set opacity is going to do. Set opacity is basically the whole way that things fade in and fade out. If you've ever dealt with anything like Photoshop or anything like that, you'll know that opacity means if you give it a specific number, it will be able to be see-through a little bit. Very similar to what our fade happens, because when, it, when things start fading out, you can see through it, see through it, see through it, and then it's gone. So that's why we are going to play around with an opacity so that we will be able to see through it, see through it, see through it, and then it'll be gone. So we will be calling this function a lot. Now, the way opacity works in HTML is if you have an opacity of zero, that means that you cannot see it at all. But if you have an opacity of one, that means you can see it. So if we were going to fade out something, we would want to start at one and we would want to bring it down to zero because one, you can see it, zero, you can't. And if we wanted to fade in something, we would start at zero and we would bring it up to one. I hope that kind of makes sense. So. In here, we are going to put all of the different ways that you can set an opacity in every browser possible so that no matter what browser will go to our page, we will be able to set the opacity for that browser. And there are actually four different specific ways that a browser can set an opacity. So just follow along with me. Just say document dot get element by ID. And we pass an ID, so we're just going to have ID here. And then say style dot opacity is assigned level. So basically what this would do is say if in here we said set opacity and we passed in the ID and we passed in 0.5. What this would do is it would take the ID, so it would take that message here, it would find that message by ID, and it would send it that we wanted to change the opacity to 0.5, so that would be half see-through. So, and then it would jump down to here, and it would make the style opacity a level of 0.5. So if we save this, and we come over here, and we said that was the fade out button, and we fresh, and we click fade out, you will see now we have an opacity of 0.5. But the only problem is that worked in my browser of Google Chrome, but it might not have worked in my browser of Internet Explorer or Mozilla or any of those things. 
So what I want you guys to do, I know this is a little bit of a headache, but we want this thing to be completely browser compatible. So we need to check for every single browser. So just follow along with me and let's just do this really fast. So highlight from the dot after style all the way to the beginning of document and copy it. And then paste it three times for me. And then after the first style, I want you guys to do a capital M, O, Z, O, P, A, C, I, T, Y is assigned level. And then at the end of this one, say K, H, T, M, L, opacity is assigned level. Oh, I didn't want to do an enter. Oh man, I just got rid of it. Okay, K, H, T, M, L, opacity is assigned level. All right, and our last one is... This one is a little weird. It's going to be style.filter is assigned, and then do alpha opacity equals, and then give me a plus. And then in parens, we have to say level times 100. And then one more plus, and then we're going to close that paren that we opened up previously, give it a semicolon and then give it a semicolon outside of the parens. Now, what this one is for is for older browsers of Firefox, I'm pretty sure, but I'm, I'm not even 100% sure of that. And then this one is for older browsers of something else. But then the last one is for browsers of um, Internet Explorer. And what you can see is um, basically what Internet Explorer does is instead of working from 0 to 1, they will work from 0 to 100. So that's why we have to multiply it by 100 here, and then you just use this syntax to make it work. I know it's kind of weird, but this is really good for us because no matter, so let's say if we called this function and it came down here, and then their browser tried to do this, but it didn't make sense to them, it would skip this one. And then maybe this one didn't make sense, and this one didn't make sense. But then it came down to this one because they were in Internet Explorer 7, and this statement made sense. Well, then their opacity would still be able to change. So that's why we did that. So I want to copy this, set opacity, and I want to bring it into fade in. And this is the last thing we're going to do in this tutorial. And we are going to check that if we click fade out, or we click fade in, that th that picture will fade out and fade in to 0.5, right on click. So let's check that. So refresh it, click fade out, it went to 0.5, refresh it again, click fade in, it went to 0.5. So this is all we're getting done in this tutorial. Now we have figured out how to set the opacity of something within JavaScript. So the next part is we are going to be making a loop that will be able to cut down the opacity while we are go like over the course of a couple of seconds. So I hope this tutorial was useful and I hope you guys learned a little bit and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment below if you have any questions and uh, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.